السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته very honored to come back to Bosnia my first visit to Bosnia was 1982 80 I was going to Egypt as a medical doctor to have my holiday with my family and I was looking at the map I always look at the map to see where are the Muslims in Europe at that time I discovered the mosques in the Balkan especially in Bosnia on the way back I stopped for a week from Belgrade to Zagreb to Sarajevo by air and by train. The beautiful thing, you can come back from Belgrade to, to Sarajevo by train. See the beauty of Bosnia. Then you go to the mountains, see the beauty of Bosnia. Then you go to the mosques with Menorat, and the mosques was no Menorat. This was my first impression in Bosnia, 10 years before the war. I loved it. And they're still in love with Bosnia, and they'll be in love with Bosnia forever. Bosnia, for me, represents not a memory, a living memory. Not a living memory, an impression. Not an impression, a painful and challenging impression in our hearts, especially in Europe. 1982 was Sabra and Shatila who discovered the massacre done in the camps in Lebanon. It was a huge blow in our faces and wake up call, which changed my course of life from succeeding in the membership exam into failing in the membership exam and changing my career into what I am now doing nowadays. 92 was another ugly scar on the face of humanity, which we saw at the backyard of Europe. Europe is the country or the continent of peace, tranquility, democracy, and, 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 and. But Bosnia was another ugly wake-up call for all of us. We cannot imagine what happened, but it happened. Now we are talking about it. Why you are here today and tomorrow and this week? Because we need to share, we need to feel, we need to care, we need to have an impression in our life and connect it with the lives of others. And we need to go back with a story, with a memory and with a solution and we need to fight to keep peace intact in this area, the Balkan, which is the land of honey and blood. We can invest in the honey, but not in the blood. This is what we have to do nowadays to stop the ugly scenes of the early 90s and the ugly scenes of the First and Second World War, which claimed hundreds, you know, more, two wars claimed more than 100 million lives in Europe, more than 140 or 150 million lives being killed, taken during the First and Second World War. We have, we have, we have to stop the blood shed and gain. And again, not only here, but everywhere. So what we are going to take back with us is a message for me to reform my life and to spread it to the other people who have not been here. A message, because you are the follower of the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A message or a mission, because you are the follower of the one who accomplished his mission. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The only prophet has been sent by Allah where his mission was accomplished successfully.
not only by saving the Israelites from Egypt and Pharaoh, not only by putting the Tawheed, this is in the case of Moses, السلام, putting the Tawheed as Prophet Abraham, السلام, not only by saving the lost sheep of the Israelites by Jesus, peace be upon him, or by building the ship to take these animals and birds and human beings after the flood. He built everything for humanity to save humanity and keep humanity intact. And any and each one of us has to be extremely proud, extremely proud with the one who could not be able to read and write, but taught humanity how to behave, how to live, how to save, how to build humanity and build civilization and build renaissance. This is your impression when you come here and take it back. It's not just listening to fairy stories. No, it's living the issue, living the issue. It's connecting you and myself to the source of the issue to find solutions to prevent such issues happening again to any nation, to any race, to any community, to any religion globally, even to animals, to birds, to planets. This is number one. Number two, which is personal. When we started in the 80s, I only managed to speak and connect with the elderly people, elderly people. But I kept learning a lot to talk to younger in the mid 40s, then younger in the mid 20s. This elevation, by the way. The more you go dig deep down, the higher your legacy, the higher your building will be. The more you build a house on the surface, the easier for the water and the blow of the wind to remove it. So in the 80s with the elderly, then the 40s and 50s, then the 20s and 25. Then now I'm trying to elevate myself by standing next to Zahra. Come here. No. Come here. Maryam, Maya, Medina. Come here. Your success story, when you be able to communicate with this edge, come on. I am protected from you by standing with them. If I convince you that you make me successful, if you understand me, that I'm becoming more successful. So for the last 35 years, I'm trying, or we are trying to go deep down to the roots of the community, to be with them. Maybe in the coming year, I will go to the, how old are you? 11. 11. 17, 12, 12. Okay. Maybe, anybody else is 17 or under? No, you are 71. Oh, wait, <laughs> Come on, uh, Salah. Oh, oh, because, uh, but Bismillah, mashallah, Bismillah, mashallah, Bismillah, mashallah, Bismillah, mashallah. So, this is your message. Not only to convince your group, but to convince this generation. Because we have to work for this generation, not for our generation. Our generation is decaying, and they are rising. And we have to stand up for them. And if you want to be more elevated, you go to the under 10. If you want to be more elevated, you go to the under 5. If you want to be more elevated, you go to under 2. Then you go to the newly born babies. And this was the Prophet ﷺ was communicating with all these edge groups. If you want to be more elevated, you talk to animals. You connect with animals. Like the Prophet ﷺ was connecting with the, eh, with the camel who was crying. You connect to the trees, to the habitat. You connect to the insects, like Prophet Isma, uh, 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 Sulaiman, the ant. 
Communicate, connect, because Allah has given us a wealth, a wealth in the construction of our body, but we cannot be able to discover it. The wealth in the capacity of the brain, in the capacity of the mind, in the capacity of the heart, in the capacity of everything, but we only look at the surface. We don't dig down. The more you dig deep down and be able to convince the insects, the more you'll be elevated and your legacy will be forever. You got it? Wherever you go, we are surrounded by creation of Allah. Writing, listening, filming, recording, reporting to Allah what you are doing. Now here, in this room, we have thousands of angels. Talking about Maya, Medina, Salahuddin, Zainab, Maryam, Zahra, and each one of us, and telling Allah, every creation, wherever you go to any road, or any mountain, you make a dua. Oh, creation of Allah on this mountain, help me. Without, you don't have to know who are they. And this is the connectivity between you and them to make your journey successful and to make your mission accomplished. We cannot accomplish our mission without the help of the other creation that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created to serve us. So humanity has been in the, in the structure, built all the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to serve you, Maryam, serve you, Zainab, serve you, Salah al-Din, seriously, serve you, Maya, and Medina, and Zahra. Don't become a servant to anyone but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the second message. The more you go down to the deep, uh, the deep roots of the problem, to the most vulnerable and marginalized people in the community, to the most remote, the more you build a solid and stronger community. The more that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make your mission successful and your message to be heard. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam, وَأَذِّنْ فِي النَّاسِ Make announcement for prayer in the middle of Mecca. Huh? No internet, no Facebook, no video, no telephone. Allahu Akbar, labbaik, Allahumma labbaik. How the people in India, Pakistan and China will come to this place? You make the azan. And I, Allah, will let people to come. For you, make the adhan. For you, stand up for the message and spread the message to accomplish your mission. Now, the beauty of this meeting now is I will ask each one of the future. You are 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 the future. To give us their message, what are they going to say when they go back to Canada? Who can start first? You, Medina. I don't want to start. <laughs> no, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Maria. Tell the people what you want to say when you go back. Um, Come here. Tell those people. Those and, people? And, and tell those people and everybody watching you today. What do you want to tell them when you go back, or now? That we're very privileged for everything that we have, and we should appreciate everything more, and that um, this trip helped me better understand everything that I have, and inshallah, everything will be peaceful. Zakallah khair. May Allah bless you, inshallah. Um, I think that because we are privileged, that it's our job to take care of those who can't take care of themselves. and. If we're going to make this world a peaceful place, that it's up to us to be visionaries and think globally and make sure that we don't get stuck in our own bubbles, but we actually think about others. Um, so I think from what I learned from uh, the doctor was that uh, if we want to 
help our world, help the future, we, ha we have to help this generation. Because we are the ones that are going to change the world. Inshallah, we are the ones that are going to make this world a better place, a happier place, and more peaceful. And I'm not saying that it's, it's useless to, help, uh, to really advise the older generation, but I'm just saying we are the generation that will make this world a better place, inshallah. Yeah, just a comment. Abdullah ibn Abbas started to teach the older generation at the age of 13 or 14 in the middle of Medina. He was a scholar. If you have the knowledge, teach me. If you have the knowledge, teach me. If you have the knowledge, teach me. Okay? Yes, sister. Okay, um, when I go back to Canada, I'm going to tell people that like, you should always help people in need because they, they need help and they need money. Uh, not money, but like they need support. And because lots of the Muslim countries are getting into wars, and I just think that we should try to help most of the countries. Thank you. Maya. When I go back to Canada, I'm going to tell them how lucky we, lucky we are to be living in such a safe country. Like other countries, they're not as safe as Canada. And also, we should be so happy that for like everything we have, other countries, like people are living on the streets. We are so lucky for everything we have. And yeah. Thank you. Like they all said, we are all very privileged with what we have today. And considering we are so young and we're the next generation, there's so much that we can do, and it's best to start at a young age. And when we go back to Canada, these are all lessons that we learn here that we can share with the world in order to make a change and make the world a better place, inshallah. Thank you. Now I am elevated by you. The, what are they? They are the elevators. Elevator one. Elevator two, 10 horsepower, 20 horsepower. <laughs> Elevator three, four, five, six. Investment in human resources is more rewardable, more rewardable than investment in gold, diamond, oil, land, and others. We would love to follow you. We would love to follow you, Maya, Zahra, Medina, Salah Din, Zainab, and Lady Maryam, which your, ma your name is mentioned as a chapter, whole chapter in Quran. I love you all, whether you love me or not. <laughs> I love you, I love you, I love you. Jazakumullah khair, wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. How do you start in Bosnia? Ah. Ah. Now I'm vulnerable because you took them from around me. As I said, it's very difficult to bring the memory of 1992 back. Extremely difficult. We started with $10,000 in December 1991. When we came here to Sarajevo before the war broke out in 1992, in April 1992. Javid Bustam came here and met the Mashiach, Sheikh Saleh Julakovic, at that time in Sarajevo. And everybody was preparing themselves for a war, because there was existing war between Bosnia and Croatia, between Serbia and Croatia at that time. We have been talking about Bosnia war a year or so before that. We were touring the Gulf and the Middle East telling them Bosnia. I said, where is Bosnia? Nobody knows where is Bosnia at that time. Even after the war came out, we took the Sheikh with us. The Sheikh of the, like the Mufti, the Grand Mufti of Mashiach. It was the first high-level tour that we did in May, June, July, 1992. You know what? No plan. No suits, nothing, no budget, nothing. We told the Sheikh, Sheikh, come with us. He came with us to London and everybody was crying. White face, blonde hair, green or blue eyes. Oh, they looked up. Muslim, always black, <laughs> brown, red. 
Yellow. <laughs> not white. Anyway, you know the journey which was not planned. How many countries were visited at that time? UK, Qatar, Bahrain, Emirates, Kuwait, and Egypt. And this is the seeds has been planted by the Sheikh when he traveled all this area, giving khutbah in Al-Azhar. People were actually crying, crying. In the, at the end of the 20, 20th century, 20th century, we're discovering where the Muslims are living. This is the complete ignorance of us as Muslim majority countries at that time. This is how we started it. Could not be able to send a pound or a penny or whatever it is to Sarajevo at that time. We used to have the phone call from Muhammad Katarji in Sarajevo. I, I need only $1,000. $2,000. Couldn't, because Sarajevo was under siege at that time. But we decided to carry on. To carry on. To carry on to make that change. And we collectively managed to make the change to bring peace back, to spread the best in the message of systematic governmental or governmental organized rape. 1992, 93, 94, from the age of four years old to the age of 70 years old, recorded not only by the Muslim but by the non-Muslims in Europe. Four years old have been raped. Seven years old have been raped in front of the family. We managed, not only the Muslim organization, but Muslims and non-Muslim organization were actually uh, recording this. And this is to stand up against the tsunami of the diverse challenges with less or no resources and to say, I'm not going to move and leave unless we make the impression, unless we make that change. And all of us, Muslims and the Muslim organization, managed to make that change. And alhamdulillah, there is a peace now here. But we want this peace to hold on and on and on for years to come, centuries to come. Okay? We don't want to have the ugly scenes of 92, 93, 94, 95 to come back again here or anywhere else. We started with no budget, but with the heart of the people who used to cry day and night for people they have no relationship with them, but people they loved because they felt that they are human being like them, and they did Fight for justice and peace. How many times you came here? I can't remember. Uh, uh, all in one? <laughs> I went to the tunnel uh, once when they have injured my... Introduce the tunnel because you are going to... Uh, yeah, the tunnel was actually a life-saving. was a life-saving for Sarajevo. It was the only life-saving gate to bring food, medicine, and any sustenance for the people of Sarajevo who were under siege. It was 800 uh, meter plus, less than two meters, no, less than one and a half meter height, you know, something like this. You have to keep walking like this. And for, to come out from the tunnel, it's a very open area where the snipers were waiting for anybody to cross. We crossed it, I crossed it once. But people crossed it and they were killed or injured by the snipers. But people were determined to live. People were determined to stand up. People were determined actually not to give in to unjust. And this is what I want you, Zahra, to do. And Maya and Maryam and Medina and Zainab and Salah al -Din. And, 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 and. Never give up for justice, never give up for peace building, never give up for digging deep down to the roots of the problem. 
I forgot to mention a story in Tunisia because he came from Tunisia. One of the Sahabis that opened up so that Mom, there was an, uh, an army leader was, was Aqab ibn Nafa was going to this area in Tunisia and he was warned. There's a lot of scorpions, serpents. Uh, what else? Uh, huh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, snakes. All the things which can kill your horses and kill you. You know what he did? He went to this valley and he made a dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the Lord of those creatures. Allah removed them from us. And each one of them were going to their holes, taking their little ones with them. This is exactly what Omar have done. When he came to, when, when Amr ibn As came to Egypt. See, the creation is listening to you. When he came to Egypt, and Amr ibn As told them every year for the Nile to bring the water, they have to throw a young, virgin, beautiful girl in the Nile. Omar said, no, not anymore under Islam. When you come and tell me who liberated woman, no, not anymore in Islam. And he wrote a message, talk to the Nile of Egypt, telling the Nile, if you bring the water because of you, we don't want you. But I am asking the Lord who asked you to bring the water here to flood. And you throw this in the Nile and the water came. It did not stop. And from that date, the date of liberating the young girls at the age of Maryam or Zainab or Zahra or Maya or Medina, all the women were saved or all the girls were saved because they connect the cause of the water running in the Nile to the creator of the Nile and the creator of the people who drink from the water of the Nile. Aqba ibn Nafi' in Tunisia and Umar ibn Khattab in Egypt. I say I love you again, or it's too much love, huh? <laughs> <laughs> huh? It's for, free. for free? No, 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 no. Don't say love for free again. <laughs> Nothing is for free. Jazakumullah khair. May Allah bless you, inshallah. And I hope that I learned from you a lot. A lot. A lot. And I want you to write to see if I am useless or I could be useful to you. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.